What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are up at Anglia Car Auctions once again for the April Classic Car Sale. There's loads of cars here set up. I think there's over 250 going through over the weekend. So let's have a look around and see what's going under the hammer. First car that we're looking around is this 1989 VW Golf GTI model in a Cabriolet. It mentions in a description that the vendor purchased this in 2016 and since then has been doing some light restoration and service jobs. The Golf GTI has covered 133,000 miles and it has MOT until October 2023. The estimate on the Golf GTI is £4,500 to £6,500. Moving on, we've just found this 1998 Rover Mini Cooper in this orangey bronze colour. It's described as a Mini Cooper RSP replica. The Mini was involved in an accident in 2004 and it's been restored since, but it is starting to show signs of its age again. Here's the engine bay with its injected 1275cc engine. The little Mini has got MOT until March next year, so it's got a full year's ticket on it, and the estimate is seven to nine thousand pounds. Up next is this 2000 Ford Mondeo ST200. It's one of only 300 saloon examples. I'm really liking the colour coordinated interior one thing i love on special editions is like the little touches just says st 200 on the gear stick and it also says limited edition down here this is number 255 out of 300 duratec 2.5 liter v6 very desirable engine they come out of the factory with 202 brake horsepower i'm really loving the color of the mondeo i think it's imperial blue but i could be wrong it's got MOT until July this year, so it's on the roads, and the estimate is six to eight thousand pounds. We found a 1982 Vauxhall Cavalier. The mileage on the Cavalier is just showing 16,000 miles. Not sure if that's genuine or not. It is worth noting that this car came from a filming company and the True Crime series hasn't even aired yet, but whilst they were filming, the car was wrapped in black, but I think the wrappers helped it because the paintwork is in lovely condition. You can even see the remnants of the black wrap that they had on it. Just looking around the engine bay of the Cavalier, very clean, no obvious signs of rust. The car has got MOT until September this year, the estimate on the Cavalier is just two and a half to three and a half thousand pounds. It's raining quite a lot in the tent, so you just have to bear with the background noise. This is a 1981 Ford Cortina, two litre GL. With just 80,000 miles on the clock, the Cortina has a very nice interior. Doesn't need any work at all, really. There is the two litre Pinto in its very original and untouched engine bay. Not many signs of rust in here. The car's actually got MOT until March next year. Anyway, the estimate on the Cortina is four to six thousand pounds. Check this out, it's a 1987 BMW E28. I really like the look of this. This BMW is a automatic. I've just been checking out this dash. Does that come like that? Looks really neat how it's all like stitched in and that. The mileage on the 5 Series is 97,000. Here is the 2963 cc engine also just found this sticker over here this is a timing belt was done in 2021 which is always nice to hear one thing i've just spotted that is mega fancy it's got these gas struts on it 
Don't see them on old Fords, do you? All you BMW lot will have to tell me what wheels these are, but I just really like them. Sort of look like BBS wheels almost. Anyway, the BMW's got MOT until November this year, and the estimate is seven to nine thousand pounds. We're just looking around this 1967 VW camper van. It's fair to say that it's a very big project. When we were visiting Anglia Car Auctions the other week, Lauren spotted this coming in and she said it would make a really cool like cocktail bar or something. If you can just restore it and you can open up all of this, make a bar on the other side, it'd be really cool, wouldn't it? I said it was a camper van earlier, but it's not. It's originally a minibus. It used to have 12 seats in it. It's a split screen as well. But yeah, it's very cool. It was imported from Germany in 1982. Anyway, there's no reserve on a VW. That's 76. We're back on the net and go all the way on the net. 76. Yeah, this is a 1972 T2 camper van. It's a bit different on the interior compared to the one we just looked at. This one's all kitted out. Got the full works, the sink, fridge and whatnot. Really nice fresh seats and door cards. Here is the air-cooled engine. Now this is meant to be a 1.6 litre engine, but this has been upgraded to a 1.8 litre. Anyway, the estimate on the T2 camper is 14 to 18,000 pounds. And for the first, 14.6 for the second. I'll take 14.8, all done in the room. Moving on to a very rare car. There has been one of these here before. This is a, a Clio V6. Having a look on the interior, it looks like it hasn't been driven. And that is because it's only done 1,800 miles. Yep, you heard that right. 1,800 miles, it's barely been ran in. I bet this would be really cool to drive one of these. I like all the door cards. I think that's Alcantara. The bodywork features these big side air intakes and that is to get all the air into the rear engine anyway the estimate on the clio sport v6 is 80 to 90 thousand pounds twice all done you'll never find it again 79 moving from one renault clio to another one now this is a 1994 renault clio williams phase one I can't say I've looked around one of these before and I really like the dash. Really nice touches with the W's on the seats. It's also got some Williams mats in there too. Same sort of scenario with the badge here, like I was saying earlier. This is number 55 of 390 examples that were built. Here is the two litre engine bay. I'm not too clued up on the engine, so if you want to put some facts about this in the comment section, that's always welcomed. And the estimate on the Phase 1 Clio Williams Special is 25 to 30,000 pounds. Twice, any further interest in the room, never find it again, 19 and a half. If you've ever been to Anglia Car Auctions, this won't be a familiar sight. This is a new section that they've got here. I've been drawn to this Capri in this new room. It's very echoey. <laughs> This is a 1986 Ford Capri, two litre laser. There we have it, a very familiar sight inside a classic Ford engine bay. That's the two litre Pinto. That's the interior of the Capri. It's covered 55,000 miles. One thing I did just spot on this is it's got some aftermarket, sort of like four spoke wheels, they're JBW. They've got quite a big offset on them. The estimate on the Capri is seven to 9,000 pounds. I'm at the door at 5.9 provisional. Yours 5.9 provisional. Looking around another Capri, but this one is a polar opposite of the one we've just looked around. This is a 1971 Ford Capri. It's a three litre, but it's like a rally car or a race car. Comes with a very fitting number plate. Back to basics in the interior. It's all stripped out. Big old cage in there with one bucket seat. It's a three litre V6 engine. When I first looked inside this engine bay, I was a bit confused with the silicone hoses, but they're just purely to let more air into the engine bay and up into that filter. Once the sale is finished for this Capri, the V5 needs to be applied for. They don't have it here. And the estimate is 18 to 22,000 pounds.
Then it goes at 17,000, very provisional. This must be a very familiar sight for the Ford enthusiasts that follow my channel. Yes, we're in a Mark I Cortina engine bay. This Cortina in particular is a 1964 model. It's recently had quite a bit of money spent on it, which involved a full gearbox overhaul and rebuild. The interior is very original. I won't lie to you guys, it's not completely mint in here. It could do with a bit of TLC, but whoever purchases this car can do that. The Cortina sold for £30,000 back in 2016, and it's estimated £30,000 to £35,000 when it goes under the hammer this weekend. At £28,000 online it is. 28,000 provisional, we'll see what we can do. Now it definitely isn't just mint cars that they auction off here at Anglia Car Auctions. Here we have a Talbot Sunbeam Lotus that's been off the road since 1994. From the first glance you can tell that it needs quite a lot of restoration. The interior seems to have fared slightly better than the exterior, but still needs some restoration. It also comes with some spare parts, which is always nice to see. It's very rusty, but features these really fresh wheels. Already got signs of previous welding in the engine bay. Luckily, someone hasn't pinched the engine out of it as well. It's fair to say that's going to need a lot of TLC to get it back on the road, but the V5 is present, and the estimate is 14 to 18,000 pounds. It is. At 13.3, that's just provisional, we'll see what we can do. It wasn't long before I was drawn over to another Ford, this one being a 1984 Ford Escort Cabriolet. Tell you what though, that interior is very presentable. The mileage is reading just over 65,000. I did just praise the interior, but that dash hasn't fared well. It's very cracked all along there, it's going to need a new one. Just looking in the boot and it's actually really nice and fresh. And another benefit of this Escort is it's just had an MOT, so it's got a full year's ticket. Here's the engine bay, the 1.6 CVH that's injected. Very fresh up here. I think it might have had some new wings or something. You can see there. But you know what, for the best part, the car's actually pretty clean. The estimate on the Mark III Cabriolet is six to eight thousand pounds. 5,000 it is provisional twice, third time it's saying at 5,000 provisional. I'm just in the interior of this Metro GTI. Really do like the retro theme on the seats and the door cards. And there is the 1.4 litre engine, 16 valve injected as well. The Metro's just covered 42,000 miles and it's another classic car that's just had an MOT, so it comes with a full year's ticket. Anyway, the estimate on the 1992 Rover Metro GTI is just two and a half thousand pounds to three and a half, which I think is really presentable and can get you straight into the classic car scene. 5,800 it is now and done. 58 yours it is. Part of me records these BMWs for the viewers of the channel, but part of me actually gets drawn towards them as well. Now this is a 1993 BMW 520 SE. I just really like the look of this thing. That interior looks really clean. That grey dash and grey seats. Yeah, I quite like that, you know. I wasn't expecting to see such a big engine in there. So that's a two litre engine, I presume. The BMW's had four owners in its life and it's on 89,000 miles. And honestly, I think this is a really, really clean example. And I am shocked at that estimate, three to four thousand pounds. I was just eyeing that up, sort of having a little look. I don't need another car, but three to four thousand pounds, that's a lot of car. It gathers up, it's time to sell. It goes out the door then at four thousand three, it isn't done. Four, three, yours it is. Now, I wouldn't normally be drawn to one of these, but this is a 2001 Ford Puma. It's had one previous owner, and it's only covered 5,000 miles. The interior is in very good condition, almost brand new, dare I say it. Only 5,000 miles on the clock. Seats have barely been sat in. An absolutely immaculate 10 out of 10 engine bay here. 
Here is the 1.7 engine, which is normally the only part of a Puma that survives. Most of them get scrapped where they've rusted away. Yeah, the 1.7 Puma engine could be put into other Fords very easily. The estimate on the Puma is seven to nine thousand pounds. Third time of calling at eight five and selling. Yours it is net, eight five out the door. We've just come outside to see the huge array of cars that are out here as well. Caught my attention straight away. It's a Mark IV Escort Mordor. The Escort has got a very brown interior. The speedo shows over 7,000 miles, but you can always go back on the MOT and check if that's genuine. It doesn't say in the description whether it is or isn't. Dare I say it, the arches and sills are the worst place for the old Fords to go. This side looks all right. And very surprisingly, this side looks all right as well. I think this might be a real clean Escort. There is the old faithful 1.3 Valencia engine. The same as you find in the Fiestas of this age as well. But honestly, I feel like that's my car of the sale. I really like that. It's estimated just 1,500 to 2,500 pounds. We've come across another VW Golf. This one being a 1982 GL Auto. It's come directly from a film company. Proper retro interior. I really like the dash on these. And it's covered 144,000 miles. Here is the engine bay. Hasn't been tarted up at all. You can take it for what it is. Apparently on the V5, this Golf is noted as a diesel, but it is definitely a petrol. So it's a mistake on a V5. The Golf has a four years MOT with it and it's only estimated 2,000 to two and a half thousand pounds. It wasn't long before me and Lauren spotted another Mini Cooper. This one is a 2000 Rover Mini Cooper. This Mini Cooper has only covered 48,000 miles. The dash is starting to peel off there, unfortunately. But I'm sure you could probably get another one of them. The Mini was driven here from London, so it'll probably get you home. It does need a slight bit of TLC though. Just starting to go on this sill here, along with the wing there. I think there might be a little bit of a leak as well in here. I just went to try and pop the bonnet and it's got loads of water coming out from the dash. Here is the 1275 engine. I don't mean to point out too many negative bits but see some rust coming through just there as well. Anyway, the estimate on the Mini Cooper is five to six thousand pounds. You now join me inside this very blue Mark III Fiesta. It's only covered 27,000 miles. Yet again, some very clean arches and seals. Same goes for this side. Very clean arches and seals. A very basic but clean engine bay. One thing to note is that it was registered as an insurance theft loss which I'm assuming is like stolen recovered, um, but I'm not too sure if that would affect anything on the V5. Anyway, the estimate on the free owner Mark III Fiesta is just 1,500 to 2,000 pounds. This auction just keeps getting better and better. We've just stumbled across this Mark II Fiesta 1.4S. Quite a rare model now, I'd say. Ah, I didn't know that. They come with a XR2 steering wheel. Looking very original and in fairly tidy condition. The only thing that is quite potent in here is the smell. Uh, there's some greenery growing down there, so Dare I say it, it is very damp underneath that carpet. There's a closer look at the engine bay, starting to go in the corner of that wing. It's 
got lots of dust over it. It's almost like it's been sitting in a body shop. There you go, that's the 1.4 CVH engine. If I'm being completely honest, I think the rain here is doing the paintwork justice because when I saw the pictures online, I thought it had quite a lot of defects in it. If I was going to purchase this Mark II Fiesta, I'd have to look around it a lot more. It's got fresh under seal underneath, so I think it's been slightly tarted up for sale. The V5 is present and it is a no reserve car, so whatever this sells for, it's going home for that price. There we go. Moving from one Mark II Fiesta into another, but this one is a XR2. This one is the full works. This XR2 has the same reason for sale, which is loss of storage. And that's what it said on the 1.4S. So they're possibly from the same vendor. Lots of work that's been carried out on the inner wings and the engine bay. Some of it's not too pretty. Big old plate that's been put in here and loads of sealant down there. Same story with the overspray as well, quite a lot of white everywhere. Now that is the 1.6 CVH engine. You can see how crudely the filler has been put on here. It's not even been rubbed down properly. It's meant to be a join there. Parcel shelf has got the two speakers in it, like everyone used to do. It's a 20 yarder, isn't it? Rust is just starting to come through there. So I wonder what's under that body kit. Anyway, it has got its imperfections. I personally would like to buy a more genuine car that hasn't been touched. I'd like to buy one with the rust and restore it myself instead of buying one that's been bodged up, dare I say it. There is no estimate on this car. It is a no reserve. So whatever this XR2 sells for, that's what price it's going home for. That's 6,004. That's 6,400. We are just in the back of a very special van that I spotted last week when we were up here. Started to be restored, it's got new sound deadening in the back. Both of the rear doors are in good nick, with no real signs of any major rust. But for anyone wondering, it is a 300E van. It does need quite a lot of restoration, the seats aren't even bolted in. They're just in there. It's had quite a lot of welding already by the looks of it. It's still got a lot of work to do on the bodywork side. I've had to get my dad involved to show me where the bonnet pop is. I didn't even know that. There's a two litre Pinto. It does have a Type 9 gearbox as well attached onto it. But just look at this thing. It is stunning. It really is. I love the look at the front of these, the 100Es and whatnot. My dad used to have a 100E when I was a kid. Anyway, the estimate is £4,000 to £6,000. I won't be having a bid because I've got no room in the garage, but I'd be seriously tempted if I had room at home. At £4,400, it's going to go then all the way. You've all done it in the room and selling. That's yours. This is the guess the hammer price car for the Saturday here at Anglia Car Auction. It's a 1983 Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud SC. Me and Lauren don't have a clue about this car, same with my parents, so we're just going to give it a guess and we could win £250. I've gone for a guess of £7,300 and Lauren's gone for a guess of £8,500. This is the Sunday car, a 1974 Lancia 2000. Same with the Alpha. Don't know too much about it, but we're gonna give it a little guess. And we could win 250 pounds. And here are mine and Lauren's guesses for the Lancia. I've gone for a 6.4, she's went for a 4.9. Let's see what it makes when it goes under the hammer. 8,000 pound in the room, I sell it once. Twice, you're out in the net, make no mistake. That's yours, sir. That brings us to the end of the weekend up at Anglia Car Auctions, watching all of the classic cars go under the hammer. There were a couple of high hammer prices that I just wanted to discuss with you guys. That Metro GTI was only estimated £2,500 to £3,500, and it went for £5,800 in the end. 
So yeah, that was pretty mental. Another one that I personally felt was quite high, but it was within its estimate, was uh, Puma, which had only done 5,000 miles. It ended up selling for £8,500, but as they always say at the auction, find another. You probably can't. Now I do try and make these outros quite brief, but I just want to quickly talk about the two Mark II Fiestas. I thought the 1.4S was a reasonable hammer price, but that XR2 was crazy. It had rough bodywork, even worse engine, and yeah, I just think you can pick up a base model Mark II Fiesta, like for three or four grand that's on the road with an MOT. Although, I guess that's just the Ford tax coming into the equation, and especially the XR2 tax. So, yeah, let me know what you think about that hammer price in the comment section below. As well as some higher prices, there was also loads of bargains, I felt. Quite a few went provisionally, but to find out if they actually sold, you can go onto Anglia Car Auctions and find out the end prices of all of them and whether they come to a agreement when they sold provisionally. But yeah, I just want to give a shout out to Anglia Car Auctions, everyone there for being so welcoming. Yet again, it's such a well laid out and organised weekend. You can watch it on their live stream on YouTube as well. I've just always enjoyed it so much whenever I've attended. I do recommend anyone attending, even if it's just for one day or even one of their viewing days. They're open on the Thursday and Friday on the run up to the auction and then you can visit Saturday and Sunday and watch the auction. It's just a great day out. Oh yeah and also I want to give them a massive thank you for letting me fly my drone because them clips at the start of the video were my drone going around the auction so without their permission you wouldn't have uh, been able to see that lovely intro I made. But I think that's about it for this episode. If you did enjoy the video please give it a like and if you like what you see subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching and until the next one, I'll see you guys later.